Hi, y'all. There's no sound. They can hear me now. Can they hear me? Well, give them 30 seconds. <laughs> There's no sound. I'm sure they can hear us. Can you hear now? There's no sound. Just do a 30 second countdown, okay? Working on it, working on it. It's back, you can hear the sound? Can you hear me? I'm hearing it through YouTube, so yes. Yay, we got sound. Can you guys hear Eric? We should, I hear me. <laughs> now you can hear. Cash, can you hear Eric too? Say something, Eric. Hi, Cash, how are you? 30 it's seconds loud. from now. Oh, it's echoing really bad. Well, I need to turn the, there. I just turned the YouTube part of it down. Should be fine. You need to start talking, Boo Boo, because we can't wait. We can't wait thirty seconds for people to say, "Oh yeah, we hear you now." Okay. It's more mic volume. Turn my mic volume up. Eric's, uh, Eric's in the control room here. Turn my mic volume up, Eric. Oh, that's a fun thing to demand of me. Over on the right. Yeah, I'm looking over there. It's um. Black Magic 2. One's down, one's up. <laughs> one is down and one is up. Yeah. No, my mic must not be on, Eric. Hmm? My mic is not on. I got audio turned on for you. Just like I got my audio turned on. But on the right hand side, I don't see them. I see the other ones. I see the music and I see some scroll opening. Scroll up and scroll down. Oh, I got to scroll down. Technical uh, difficulties. One is up and one is down. The one is up, turn it up. It is up. It's up all the way. <laughs> you guys can't hear me very well. Sorry about this. I don't know. Can we hear you now? Should should the, mute, should the mute button should the mute button be lit or not? No. Okay, well I just unmuted it. Maybe. It's weak for me. Huh? Oh gosh. The sound is completely gone. Okay, you got to what? Go get on there and these buttons on you guys. I just, I just made these green again. Boo boo! I just made these green again. Okay, they might be okay now. So can you guys hear? I'm not sure why the sound is gone. Boo boo, I was, I was playing with this, okay? So hopefully you're good now. Can you guys hear that? It's back, it's back. Okay. The sound is back. Can you hear Eric? Well, because I'm standing by the mic too. Well, okay, you're hearing this mic. Hopefully you're going to hear her in two seconds. When she's <laughs> Sorry about that, Eric. We got two cameras, one is controlling audio, one's not, and I was having a hard time telling the difference. You can hear me arguing. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah, you can tell we do this all the time, right? So, 
there's an echo. I'm not sure why there's an echo. Um, why is there an echo? Is it because you're hearing me talk? I'm not sure. Is it this other mic causing it? I have no idea. Can you guys hear us now? Is there an echo now? Here, I'll make it simple. I'll just turn mine off unless I really have something to say. I should eliminate any echo. Eric is too loud. Okay, now is it working? Sorry about this, guys. This is live, right? It could have been because I was next to you on the mic. Let's roll with it. No more echo. Because I was standing next to you. So turn your mic back on, Eric. Why? <laughs> echo is on your mic. Okay, so... Hopefully Eric will uh, come through. So sorry about that, you guys. That's live, right? Um, technical difficulties with, um, with the inexperienced um, camera person, right? Okay, sure, Hi, y'all. <laughs> Going back off. Can you log in with your phone? Yeah, but then it'll echo back because I can hear it. So... I hope it's not, everything's working okay. Thanks for joining us. Okay, um, what you can do, boo-boo. Hey, Cash. Hey, Frederick. Now it sounds great. Do you got awesome. The, do you got the volume off on your uh, iPad then? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Hi, yeah, we can start over now since the audio is oh, it took us 10 minutes. Seems like every time we do this, we have audio problems. Uh -huh. Um so we are here to talk about the hl6 here is our little hl6 right here um well, one glad of one of them yeah i have another one set up in the other room <laughs> hi aiden hi joan thank you thank you um hey cash it's quite the delay <laughs> well you know how these things go um hey frederick how you doing Hey, uh, Hillary. Hey, Mary. Um, let's see who else is in here. Hey, Christopher. Hey, DT. How are you doing? Hey, Otto. How are you doing? Hey, Mark. What's up? How, what's good, right? Hey, um, Mickey. Mickey. Hey, Mickey. Um, how are you guys doing? So, one of the reasons I wanted to talk about the HL6 is like, it, everybody's going crazy with the HL6, right? Everybody's getting one. Um, if I don't have any idea how many they have left. How many think, you don't know how many they have left. These are Eric. I don't know. Um, yeah, this thing is like, it's like one of those things that... Um, I try to tell people, you know, I love having the HL6. I don't know if it's necessarily for everyone because, like I've said, it's a prototype. You can't get any parts for it. I know my username is uh, confusing. Hey, what's cooking, Nashville? How are you doing? We have not done this since Halloween. We haven't done this since Halloween, huh, Eric? No. I think Eric turns his mic off. No, my head, yeah, my mic's off. I gave up. <laughs> he gave up on his I mic. Mean, I'll turn it on if I want to. I'll just yell. Bye. Um, didn't realize you had to push the bowl back to get it straight. Yeah, you you definitely do have to do that. Even on like the um, the um, the eight quart, the commercial eight, you really have to push that baby down. Otherwise. It's, it tilts, or, and it's loose. So you really have to push, put that bowl in there and make sure it clips on that clip down there. Um, I, heard, I heard someone got one of these, and they actually had a different clip in here. I think it's someone that, um, maybe they're in the group, maybe they're not, but I think maybe they've got one of the 
earlier HL6 because they had a different clip on here and she had to bend it because it had it didn't you guys probably can't see this but it didn't like go out like this it like went like this and bent up it was like a C shaped and she bought another one from Miller and it had this one and it worked fine but the one she had with a different um, clamp on there didn't work that great so we need to get Pleasant Hill Grain to buy the rights and make it a house brand you know from what Miller told me they bought the rights from Hobart or they got the rights from Hobart but I think one of the problems is because Hobart scrapped the project the they really can't make another exact one like this because all the parts suppliers aren't making the parts. So they would have to find new suppliers or whatever. I know that, I, that Ank is making the motor, right? Or did make the motor. Um, we in the group get special heads up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you need to hear the bull click. You definitely need to hear the bull click. Um, so, you know, one of the problems is some people are getting one of these and maybe they didn't pack them that great or maybe they have a little scratch on them or some people have gotten this ring showed up and it was cracked. Um, this one they've been replacing. She does have extra one of those. So I think a couple of people that got one of these that had a nick in this, they sent them another one. Um, this is like a splash guard or something you can take it out to clean it um so they they were sending another one of that for the ones that were cracked um you know these mixers they've been sitting around for a while i've had mine for what eric a year maybe yeah maybe a year um so they these these mixers i think are like five, seven years maybe that they made these. So they've been sitting around in somebody's warehouse for a long time. You know, they're not perfect and glamorous like a, like a regular KitchenAid. Invite someone from Hobart to interview. Oh, like they know about them. Is your mic on, Eric? So, uh, like they know about them. I think they may have, I can't say that they like have an attitude, but when I contacted my local dealer, they had a complete attitude with me and they sent it to Hobart and Hobart just responded with like a two little liner thing. Like, um, I don't know if the fact that we have these kind of irritates them, you think Eric? What, because we're non-employees and non-dealers, but yet we got one? Yeah, it's like these mixers are out there, and, you know, if people have them, and if they have issues or whatever, you know, Hobart doesn't want to answer to that, because they're, they didn't make these and release them, so they might be pretty irritated. I don't want to, like, irritate them, <laughs> because... I mean, they could have just said, we're not giving these to anybody and sent them into scrap metal just because they didn't want them out there. Well, they have a liability, obviously, but on the other hand, they're not offering a warranty. They're not offering anything. So if it blows up, oh, well, right? Yeah. Yeah, they're not going to do anything. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you also sell off like non-compete uh, stuff. And I don't know if mix if Hobart like marketed these to the home market can they do that i don't know i didn't realize how big a company hobart is i look up their revenue and i was like hobart makes more money than KitchenAid does <laughs> i don't see them marketing the infinity to the home cook yeah hey ray mac how are you doing ray mac's in the house it's good to see you. Is KitchenAid better than the Hobart? No, I would say the Hobart is way more robust. It can, it has a way heavier duty cycle. So people see the Hobart and they automatically think that they can throw huge batches in this mixer. And this mixer is not necessarily made for bigger batches than a comparable KitchenAid of this size. It's a six quart mixer. It's not gonna make five, 10 loaves of bread, right? But what this mixer does is it is, you know, KitchenAid comes out with KitchenAid commercial, which it really isn't, you know, like has a duty cycle like a Hobart. A Hobart is built to run hour after hour after hour, day after day after day. When a restaurant opens in the morning and they're making something, they're starting at eight o'clock in the morning and they're going till midnight and they're making batch after batch after batch. A Hobart will run like that day in and day out for years. A KitchenAid, <coughs> I can't do, I can't laugh like that, right? A KitchenAid, <coughs> isn't really designed for that. It's designed for the home user. So KitchenAid designs it for somebody who wants to use it a couple times a week. So it, it, it can't take the abuse like a, a true Hobart can take because a Hobart's used to employees that use it that don't really care about the equipment. It's ran all day long. It's beat up. And so, yeah. Boo, it'd be like a 100-pound <coughs> laser jet. You use that in a commercial office. You don't use a 5-pound ink jet because mm -hmm. you're going to be printing reams and reams and reams a month, right? Same thing at Hobart. Yeah. So even though, you know, some people see this and they're like, oh, I can do, like, huge batches. You, This is not really what this mixer is. This is, this is a heavy-duty cycle mixer. It's a 6-quart mixer. And one of the things I've noticed, and I think a lot of people in the group that have gotten one of these have noticed that the kneading action between this and the KitchenAid, it, this is far superior. I think it's far superior because I think the dough is way more developed than it is in a KitchenAid. Um, this mixer is what it is. You know what I mean? It's 400 bucks, so that's what they're charging us, right? And um, I don't know. It could be one of those things that, like I said in the group the other day, it could last for years or it could, you know, any minute. <laughs> I look at it in terms of, number one, I've always wanted a Hobart. And I think the HL6 satisfies that little I want an N50 kind of feeling in me because I wanted an N50, but N50s are like $2,500, right? And they cost a lot. Yeah. My first HL6, I think it's, it's, it's the other one, I paid 200 bucks for it. <laughs> and then when I made the video, someone contacted me about there's actually more of the run of this. So that's how I got tipped off that these actually exist and they're trying to get rid of them out of their warehouse because they don't make these things. So, okay, you want to take a call? I'm just going. I wish I could call and talk Gee, about I it. Gee, I wonder okay. who wants to call first. Eric wants to call first. So, the phone number. Oh, do I have a call? Where's the... Eric can put the phone number up. <laughs> what 
We're amateurs at this, guys, so. The All phone right. number. All right, the phone number is up there. We can't see Amy. Can you see the phone number? Eric's putting the phone number up. There's a delay when you when you do this. Those are unfamiliar. Can you be, give I'm, you a I'm background? Gonna, I'm going to take it back, Amy. Okay, phone number 818-77-380-ALTC, which is Amy Learns to Cook, right? Okay, you're back, boo-boo. Um, 2582. Let me see. <clears throat> see if i got a speaker on here. Um, someone asked, <laughs> okay, but it's not coming up on here, so, hold on, whoop, hello? Yeah, let me see if I can get this Bluetooth on. For some reason, my uh, speaker's not working. Here. Okay. Um, what's going on here? Uh, ay, ay, ay. Here I go again. Why am I having so many technical difficulties today? <laughs> Okay. I actually lit up the audio button on the uh, other camera, so I don't know if that was doing any ugliness. Turn your uh, mic off, Eric. Mine, cause... Is, mine is off. Okay, okay. No, no. I'm not sure yeah. why. I'm sorry. Oh, you're fine. Oh, get in. Get in here. I don't know if you guys can get hear some reason my Bluetooth is not here. working. Well, even if your Bluetooth is not working, can you, can you just go through the phone speaker? Okay, can you hear me? Hello? Can you hear me? Yes, I can. Awesome. So who's calling? This is Frederick. I'm wrangling my dog in at the moment. <laughs> hey, Frederick. Yes, How? Yes, this is Frederick. Come on in. You can't. Some yeah. reason. I can hear you. Get in here. I don't know why. What's going on? Why this thing is not. Well, as long as your phone is near your lab, it should be fine, Bobo. I don't think you, you can hear very well, though. Whoops. I can hear you. Oh, gee. You just hung up on him, boo? I just... <laughs> okay. Did you hang up? I don't know what I just did. Um. <laughs> just a second, everyone. But my Bluetooth is... Can you call back, Frederick? <laughs> I don't know why my uh, Bluetooth's not working here. Okay, this might be better. Hi, this is Amy. Okay, yeah, I had lost the. This is Frederick. I lost you. Okay, hey Frederick. Sorry about that. I'm having all kinds of audio problems here. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. I accidentally. So I know quite a bit about about the whole board. I used to work for whole board. Oh, okay, okay, we are, okay, we're hooked up now. Frederick, you work for Hobart? I did for three years, and so I know about the N50 and the HO6, which was supposed to replace the N50. Oh, ooh, okay, now we get to, I'm, why, I'm just like really happy right now. We get to pick your brain on this. This is like. Yes, uh, you can pick my brain. <laughs> yeah. So what? What do you all? What do you know about the HL six? How close was I? Okay. I like piece stuff together okay. between what people told me. So you're pretty accurate. The HL six was made. Okay, so basically, 
the N50 was the smallest Hobart, but the problem with the N50 was that it has a clutch, which you have to turn the mixer off to, t to switch the speed. Yeah. And so Hobart's thinking was they wanted to get rid of the clutch and make it to where you could change the speed without having to shut it off and make it more for home use. And so... I'm not for sure why it, now that's, I don't know why that part never came to fruition, why they did not stop making the N50, but they, it never came to fruition, so they stuck with the N50 and they scrapped the HL6, which it is a great mix. It is, I mean. Now they made these things during the Great Recession, right? Because Cash wants to know, around 2000. Yes, they did. And that was part of the problem. They did. And that was part of the problem. People didn't have money, right? Maybe that was one of the reasons, too. And so um, it never came to fruition. And you talk about the beating action of it being superior to a kitchenaid and why they can run day in and day out. Um, one of the main differences between a Hobart and a KitchenAid is in its gearing system. That mm -hmm. HL6 doesn't advertise the, as much wattage as the 8-quart. I think that's the 8-quart KitchenAid. That's the big one now. Yeah, it's like 1.3 horsepower or something. Yes. Um, Hobart uses steel gears, and so, and there are six speeds, especially in the N50. That's why you have a clutch. It runs at a constant speed all the time, even though you're at speed one, the motor is running at its total power all the time. So when you're running it, it's at its highest power, even though it's not at the highest speed. The KitchenAid is not at its highest speed until you turn it up to, to 10. Well, you know, we so that's put... That's why they burn out easier. We put a KitchenAid on a watt meter, and it was mm -hmm. only like the... I think it was a Pro 600 or something, so it was like 500-something watts, but... Most of the speeds, when we were cycling through those speeds, it was only p pulling in the, like, low 200s, if that. One, 190, that's why, 180. That's why, because a KitchenAid, because it has the load sensors and it does not have the clutch, it runs, when it's in a lower speed, it's not using its total power. So the N50 has a clutch, but it's running at its total power. So even when you kick it into speed one, it's, it's using all 300 watts. That's why those mixers have a 300, I think it's 350-watt motor, but it will outwork a KitchenAid because it runs at its full power. Yeah, yeah. I mean, one thing I noticed, like KitchenAid, they said, need bread on two when i need bread on one in the hl6 it just rocks it it the kitchenaid i always feel like even though it doesn't like overheat it, i always have this feeling that it's struggling with it this thing when i had yeah, it on a one it just it was like you know bam give it to me it's right like a, it's like a tank yeah <laughs> Yeah, and so I'm not for sure. I have not worked on an HL6. I know they got rid of the clutch, but the gearing system inside is the same as, as the N50. They did change a few things on the computer board, but uh, now the N50 is not, I mean, you can do bread in it and that kind of stuff. You can burn it out too, but just as a heavy-duty mixer just to use all day, it will run for years. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, so because I heard from heard through the grapevine that a, they had sent some to dealers as like a demo, and the dealers said because of that variable speed, that restaurants didn't want to convert their recipes to that, so they were like, we wouldn't change from it because it's not the speeds aren't the same. And that is true in some instance because whenever you go into a restaurant, uh, especially, well, any restaurant, and if, they, if they're using a standardized recipe, a lot of times you will see in the recipe when, it, when you're changing from one speed to another, 
Uh, especially using the Hobart N50, you'll see it'll say stop and then change to speed two. But the Legacy, which is the 20 cord, you can change the speeds in it without stopping it. it. It's basically the same thing as the HO6, but the motor's bigger. Oh, okay. Oh my gosh, those things are, they're amazing, but wow. I mean, yes. what I love about this the, mixer is, I mean, right now it's an opportunity to get a mixer that even though you have that, you know, everybody's saying they can't fix them. I mean, you can always jerry-rig it, right? But it's still, for me, it's satisfying that Hobart desire for a Hobart, but man, the price is just crazy. It is, it is expensive, and one thing about Hobart, they don't have fancy colors. They are just yeah. a no-nonsense type of mixer that's there to do the job, and the, that's just all of the KitchenAids that were made in the 80s and in the 70s and in the 60s, like the uh, KM5 mixer, um, that model of mixer, those were made by Hobart, and they were a scaled-down version of the N50, but they're built the same way. They're, they're tough. They're, that, those model of KitchenAids are, are, are built differently than the Whirlpool mixers of today. Wow. So we had a question about the Dell. So, 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 can Hobart make models for the home cook, for the home use, or are they, why don't they? No, they can. They can't. The, 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 the problem is, Hobart builds their mixes so well. If Hobart was to make a, if, if they made the N50, which I love the N50, but if they made the N50 applicable in price, and kept that build quality and took the clutch out to where you could change the speed. It would just out. Uh, it would take some time, but it would outsell KitchenAid because they just last for so long. Yeah. And if you take the motor part, there's no plastic anywhere. It's all steel and metal. They would make a fortune. And so, <laughs> well, they already they would, have a fortune. And so, I don't know if when they separated from Hobart and went with Whirlpool, there was some sort of contingent on, you know, you can't build a home mixer because that's our market. I'm not for sure about that, but us Hobart technicians, we know the secrets. We know that Hobarts are the Rolls Royce of mixers. Yeah, yeah. So is there a way to adjust the, um, I don't know how familiar you are with the HL6, but is there a way to adjust the height on the paddle, like it, on a KitchenAid? I think so. If I remember right, if I remember correctly, I can't remember if the screw is behind that little that little metal clip back there where you have to push the bowl down. I can't remember, but uh, okay. I think there's a little. Um, like on the N50, there's a little. You have to use a, a Phillips screwdriver to change the height adjustment. But I, I can't remember if it's back there on that model or not. There's two little screws here. You guys probably can't see that, but there's two little screws here. I don't know if that affects this. I, I think it is. I think it is one of the best things you can do, even though they might get irritated with you. You should take your mixer to the Hobart store and let them show you. They might get irritated, but they have no choice but to, to, to show you how to use the mixer because it is a Hobart, whether they want to admit it or not. Hey, Brett, you should have, you the guy I called are. at our local, our local dealer, the guy I called, I'm telling you, he got such an attitude. He told me, that mixer doesn't exist. And I said, dude, I'm sitting here in front of one. <laughs> what was that? It Eric? exists. It was just... It was the mixer that was never supposed to be talked talked about <laughs> uh, because it just never went into production. And another thing, um, a lot of times, and I know you have callers on there that want Hobarts. If you go to the Hobart store, a lot of times they have rebuilt in fifties. Yeah, like um, they have rebuilt Hobarts. They might be thirty years old, but they're still in pristine running condition. I mean, particularly now with this uh, COVID thing, all the restaurants are closing. You can see them on, um, they're popping up on Facebook Marketplace because they're selling yeah, there. And so if, 
If the HO6 is, I'm going to try to get an HO6. I called one time and I never got a reply, but because um, I don't want to spend twenty two hundred dollars for an N50. But uh, um, do you get? Are you? That's kind of the history. Do you still work there? Uh, do you still work there or no? No, I'm gone now. I worked there for two years, but I, I did work on the machines and um, uh, even the when KitchenAid first came out, if you look at the N50, that was the design for the KitchenAid back in the day, in the, in the, in the yeah. 30s and in the 40s. And then the K5SS or KM5, I think you have one as your first KitchenAid, it's the white one. Yeah, yeah. That's a K5. Okay. Okay. Well, that, that come out of the Hobart. It was a scaled-down model. Um, and so basically most of your Hobarts, your HL6s and your N50s and the legacy models, you know, you can run them for 40 years and you might just have to rebuild them and pack them with grease. Those mixers are literally made to outlast you. So should they be repacked with grease like every year, or does it not every need year, that? No, no. Now, since they, I don't know how long they sit. Sometimes when they sit like that, the grease can seize up around in there. Um, but if it's not making any kind of noise or you don't see any grease coming out from around the planetary uh, part, it should be fine, but you might want to, have it checked maybe in four years. I would just take it to the Hobart dealership and, hey, you know, yeah, they might yeah. not claim it as a Hobart, but it is a Hobart. Yeah. I mean, anybody that can work on mixers, like Cash said, his local dealer said that they could probably fix stuff in there. But You might want to take it and have it checked uh, since it's set so long. It might not hurt to check, just to check the packing in the grease, but... If they say it needs to be packed with grease, I mean, it'll last you 40 years. I mean, you would pass it down to your children. Yeah. I have an artisan that I bought from someone because I wanted one of those, the pink breast cancer ones, and that thing is leaking mm -hmm. like crazy. I need to, I either need to do it or take it yeah. somewhere to get it done. Yeah, so to all of the viewers, the HL6 and the Hobart's a great mixer. That mixer is a six quart, and it will do bread within its limit. Now, you're not going to go start an artist, uh, artisan bake shop, <laughs> but it will do bread within its limit, and you can burn it out if you overload it, but it is just a no-nonsense type of mixer that's going to mix just about anything you put in it. Yeah. Right, like it's a lightweight. It's only meant to do so many pounds. You're not supposed to do heavy bread or anything. Like if you keep it to two loaves, I mean, you should be good. It's, it has an interesting sound to it. Like I'm used to regular it, Hobart's it, being like totally quiet. And this yeah, one. Yeah, that one's kind of buzzy. The end, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, it has like a high pitched sound to it. Yeah, they change like the 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 artisan, not the artisan. I think the artisan does, but like the KitchenAid Classic Classic Plus and those mixers, they have an AC motors, which they're fairly quiet. But like the Pro Six, they have a different motor, which is really really loud, and the the new eight quart mixer is really really quiet because it has a DC motor. But the N50 um, and the Legacy model, they have. A different motor than the HL6, and I can't remember what they are, but they are very, they're very quiet. You don't even hear them run. Yeah, that's I've seen like, so. like those the huge like you know, the um, like the bigger than the twenty cords. They're really, really quiet. Really, really quiet. Yeah, one thing I mean, is just really quiet. <laughs> so, um, am I the only one like? Give me your uh, opinion of the artisan. Um, okay, so this is how I rank KitchenAid. <laughs> um, the class, okay, a classic plus to me, which I have. The classic plus is kind of like what my grandmother would have had if she makes bread maybe every blue moon, but she's going to mm -hmm. make pound cakes and layer cakes and pies and mashed potatoes. It's good for that. The artisan to me... Um, you can do breads, but you're not going to, you, you can't expect to make wheat or wheat bread every week out of an artisan. You will yeah. burn it up. Yeah, I um, am the same. I feel the same, too. I feel like. Uh, I mean, once you, 
you start getting flour in there, I mean, it, it, it starts to really, str I mean, it really starts to struggle. And so um, if I was going to make any bread, the KitchenAid that I would have would have to be the new Pro Series with the DC motor. I mean, the Pro 600 does well with, with bread, but mm -hmm. it sounds like it's going to croak, too. <laughs> yes. That's how I feel. Like, every time I use my Pro 600, it it has that spiral hook, and it does a great job, but every time I use it, I feel, I, I always tell Eric, I feel like it's going to throw a rod. <laughs> yeah, I would, if I was going to make bread every day, I would get a Pro Series, or I would get a... Uh, a lot of the ones that you don't hear about is like a Kenwood or... Yeah, Kenwood's um, nice. Something along the line, the line of that. But if I'm just going to be making cakes and cookies and things like that, you know, I tell my friends all the time, you know, if you don't need the capacity, I think a Classic Plus is a great budget mixer. Yeah. As long as you use it within its limits. Um, if you want the uh, flashy colors, go get the artisan. Um yeah, and so that would be my thing on it. So what you have, you have a you have a Rolls Royce. That eight oh six, it will last you from now on. Oh, um, I know. I just I I love the thing. I mean, even though yeah. you know, I try to tell people that you know they're going to be gone soon. <laughs> they're going to be gone soon, and I think, well, yeah. I don't know. I will just tell you. Go ahead. I don't know how many. I'm going to. Every time I ask her how many are left, because originally she said, oh, they made 400 and something, and 200 Hobart directly either gave away or whatever. They ended up with 200 of them. And they literally and have had them the sitting in their warehouse for seven, eight years, something like that. And. Um, yeah, I. I would get the grease checked if it's been sitting that long. Yeah, because I think they made them how many years ago, Eric? Maybe like eight years ago? I don't know. Uh, well, potentially 10 or 12, technically. Yeah, yeah. So it's one of those well, mixers. I would... Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's, I'm sorry. It's just one of those mixers that it's it's like a jam to people who are like mixer geeks well it's a it's a collector's item kind of well i will just tell you that um when i worked for hobart um there was a bakery here where i live and they had the same n50 since 1940. wow and i literally i had to go work on it because the cord had frayed and it needed to be repacked wow. with grease. but it was still as quiet as day one all the paint was basically chipped off of it, but it still <laughs> ran like it was new. Wow. And so, I mean, that's just what you could expect with Hobart. I mean, KitchenAids are great. I love KitchenAids. I've, I've owned a few. Um, but um, they're not as stout as the Hobart. Um, the only thing that I would probably put up against the HL6 would either be the Kenwood or the, um, I think the, the Wolf Mixer might be comparable. Yeah, um, the Wolf Mixer is kind of, but, I, I like it, but it's expensive. It's like 900 bucks. Yeah, it's expensive, but the HL6, I mean, the, the, the beating action is so strong and it, it's because the mixer is at a constant state of power all the time. That's why the beating, when you put something in it, it just tires through it. Yeah. So does anybody have uh, any questions for Frederick? I know they do because I know there's a lot of HL6 fans in here from the group. Um, I probably missed them. Do they sell Hobart in Australia? So what now? Do they sell Hobart in Australia? This one they obviously don't, but I don't know. Do they sell... I don't think... They might. You know what? They might because they do have... The, well, that's not Australia, but they do have them in England. It's all dealing with the power cord is the issue. Yeah, yeah. It's the... Um... And if it's not under Hobart's name, a lot of times there's a lot of companies that make mixes that look identical to Hobart, but it's a different name. 
Yeah. It falls under a different name. What's the relationship so, between Hobart and Maine? Okay, so someone in the group, this is an interesting question. Is there a relationship between Hobart and Anchor's Room? Because Ank made the motor. Yeah, someone popped their HL6 open in the group. On the back it says Made in Sweden, and someone popped the top off of their HL6, and the motor has a sticker on it that says Anchor's Room. Yes, it is. What Hobart did, I'm really telling the secret. The N50 and the, the, uh, the other mixers, the Legacy and all of that, are made in Ohio. Um, uh, and the motors are made in that factory. But when they came out with the HL6, Hobart decided to start using other manufacturers for the motor since it was going to be a home mixer, just much like KitchenAid does for some of their parts, uh, like Whirlpool. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that is true. It, that mixer is kin to Anchorman. Yeah. I mean, Anchor True makes, the they make good parts. I have an Ank, and it's a great, I love it. It's a great mixer. They've been, they've been around since like the 1800s. Yeah. And so they've decided to go out and uh, since it was going to be for home use, um, Hobart was going to, do that, and they were actually going to come out with a lot of colors, but the, the recession hit, and so they just canned the whole thing. Yeah, I've so, I saw on some board that someone had a red one and a black one. Yeah, they, they, they were going to come out with, and what happened when they canned it, whoever worked for Hobart could get could get one. And at the time, I lived in an apartment, and I didn't have any room for one. I wanted one, but they were just giving them away for nothing for people wow. who worked um, wow. at the dealer or at the um, plant. They were just giving them away. Wow, that's amazing. Well, I mean, yeah, you can't go... I think that that... Go ahead, sorry. You can't go wrong with the three ninety nine price. <laughs> No, and the funny thing about it is that mixer was supposed to be priced for like five or six hundred dollars. They were gonna really make it a home mixer. It was supposed to be priced for around five or six hundred dollars. Wow, that's amazing. And so, um, like I said, I would just anybody that has one, if you have any questions, I would say, or if you have a problem with it, even though they might give you the stink eye, I would just take it to Hobart. And, and, you know, uh, a lot of the technicians, it's usually the salesmen that can be pretty hateful, but the technicians are usually really, really nice. And if you can find you a good technician and make friends, they will usually work on your mixer and tell you what needs to be done to it. That's good. That's good. That's awesome. Do they work on KitchenAids, too? Some of, uh, do they work on KitchenAids, too? They do, uh, especially the old... Uh, Model mixer like you have the very first one uh, that used to be called the heavy duty model, mm -hmm. um, and they work on a lot of those. Um, but if you make friends with the technician, they'll work on uh, they'll work on your mixer and even help you find. Uh, I want to say the N50 parts, the beaters and stuff like that, are interchangeable with that mixer. But don't fault me on that. But I think they are. Yeah. So if you want some extra stuff, I think the N50s attachments and all will work with that model of mixer. I mean, one thing that would be interesting is uh, taking one of these into your local dealer. Maybe they'll let you try one of those N50 parts. Because I know the beaters and stuff for the N50 are expensive. They're pretty expensive. Yeah, they, they, uh, and I think some of the big KitchenAid, like your, the Proline, the 8 quarter, whatever, I want to say some of those, um, maybe like the meat grinder and stuff like that would work on that mix, but don't quote me on that, but I think it would because it still has that basic hub design in the front. Yeah, it has the number 10 hub on it. I believe someone in yeah. the group said something like the grain mill or something like that has a... The edge on it doesn't work with the edge on here. It works on the uh, the size of the hub, but the problem is the attachment. This is too long for the the grain mill's attachment needs okay. to go in there farther. But I think people have used the slicer on it 
and stuff like that, and those have worked. And we're going to be doing that in a little bit, right, Bobo? Yeah. Yeah, I actually have that set up in the other room to try the slicer out to okay. see if we can get well, that to work. But I won't keep you yeah. on there, but I would just say make friends with the technicians. Forget the salesman. Make friends with the technicians, and they will really help you. And like I said, the, the mixer is a great mixer. You can do bread with it, but you're not going to be running a bake shop out of your house making bread because you will burn it out. But if you <laughs> use it within this limit, it'll last you from now on. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. I appreciate you calling in. Are you in the group? Yes. So I am in the group. Awesome, I, I, awesome. I watch you all the time. And awesome, so, awesome. Um, I'm, I'm kind of a mixer nerd. Uh, <laughs> well, you're in good company. A lot of we are, um, go ahead, yeah. We are you're in good company because we all are too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, thank you and have a good day. And uh, I can put my email in the box if anybody wants to email me any, uh, anything, ask me any questions, I can answer them. Awesome, awesome. I appreciate it. I appreciate that. Thank you very thanks. much, Frederick. Yeah, thanks oh. for calling. Oh, I really good. appreciate the info. You're welcome. Okay. Talk bye. to you later. We'll talk to you in the group. Okay. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. I think Cash wants me. That next. was awesome. That was, I mean, I'm like, sh that was awesome. I'm just, that just made my, that just made my whole, that just made my whole Christmas season right there. Um, <laughs> mixer nerds unite. Yes. That totally, that totally just made my whole day. Thank you, Frederick, for calling in. I appreciate that. That was awesome. Yeah, everybody wants your email. So if you give that out, you'll probably get a bunch of emails. So um, there we have it, right? We have someone that used to work in there that's familiar with the HLC, L HLC, HL6. And um, that was awesome. That was, that was totally awesome. So, Frederick does rule. He rules, right? So, Eric, I got some stuff in the other room that we can play with one of these HL6s. I actually have an attachment in there. We can see if it fits. Okay, but before we do any of that, you do got some little toys next to you. Do you want to, like, show any of that stuff? This is, this is just all the... Because um, some people want to see that stuff. I don't want to take your guys' whole day up, though. We'll be on here for three hours. <laughs> they have a power cord. They can turn the computer off if they have to. Okay. The phone. Okay, so my little attachments here. I bought some extra ones. I haven't really used all these. So this, this is what I think is so awesome about the HL6. Look at this thing. There is no, there's no pad like that. So this is the spiral. We're going to use this today. I set up so we can make some cookies, and I didn't develop the recipe. I just pulled it out of the Betty Crocker cookbook. So we're going to make some ginger snaps with the HL6 in the other room. Here is the uh, dough hook. Look at that sucker. I mean, this is what's so good about this versus the C. And it's hooks. got a little weight to it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. It's got a lot of weight to it. It's nice. We got the flat paddle. One thing I didn't ask him, I should have asked Frederick, like, when do you use, technically use the spiral versus the flat? Is it when you want a little bit more air incorporated in, you would use this versus that? I don't know. If anybody um, knows which one you would use, when you, would you use one? I, I always grab for this one because I'm like, I like how it spins, but that doesn't mean you're supposed to be using it for all kinds of stuff. Um, and then here's the, here's the whip. So, is your phone available to be called? Cash is trying and he's having a hard time. It should be. Poor guy. <laughs> He's going to have a meltdown. You have trouble uh, calling cash? It's 877-380-ATLC. Amy learns to cook. Um, it should be working. Okay, Frederick put his email in the chat. Um, spiral for breads, flat for batters. You'll see fat batter is thin and sharp edge versus the KitchenAid. It is kind of thin and sharp edge. Um, 
This is the pastry knife. I've never used one of these. Uh, I have no idea how to use this. It does have a little edge on here. That's probably cut the fat into the flour, right? Um, this is going to be interesting. I am going to do a video when I figure out how to use this. It does kind of have a little, not sharp, but... Did you want to check your phone? People might be having troubles. Is your, is your, did you have your service on for a limited time, though, though? No. Um, I don't think so. I can check that. Um, it should be working. Sorry about this. Why am I having so many technical difficulties today? <laughs> I guess it's just that one of those things, right? Uh, let's see if I can get this to log in. Ah, oh, sorry about that, guys. What? Was it, was it off, Lubo? No, it's on. It should be working. Hmm, that's kind of weird. One eight seven seven three eight zero two five eight two. It's not working. Your call cannot be completed this time. Code D. That's weird. That's really weird, Cash. Um, let's see. Let me see if I can send you. <laughs> Sorry about this. If you want to call that number, Cash, I just sent it to you on Facebook. You can call the direct number. Um, see if that calls. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's not working any. Oh, yeah, Eric just tried to call that number and it's not working. Sorry about that. It's sort of like this little... Um, if it allows you to turn it off, turn it off and turn it back on. Maybe it's lying to you. Maybe it is. Maybe refresh it somehow. So it's like this service that you get an 800 number. Oh, all right. There he goes. Woo! That was loud. Hello? Hey, Cash. Hi. Sorry that number wasn't working. I know. That was so weird. It was automated and it kept saying the same thing every time. <laughs> well, you know, I'm using this service called Office Tree, and it gives you like an 800 number, and then it forwards it to your, for my cell number, because obviously, I'm sure everybody would understand that I wouldn't give out my cell phone yeah. number to the world. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, it's it is a paid service, so it should be working, because I have it on, I don't know what's going on, but, you know, because that's... like, it's not like when, if somebody calls and it's off the air, it's different. It, it was so weird. That's weird. I don't know. It's not that expensive of a service. <laughs> All right, Cash. Well, you got a story for us, right? Okay, so what's your story, okay. Cash? What's up? So me and Stan Mixes go way back. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> so I used to spend a lot of time with my grandmothers, and they both had KitchenAid mixers. They One had an Artisan or a Classic Plus or like an Ultra Power or something. And the other had a Pro 500. And I remember I always wanted to get up there and play with them. And of course, I was too short, but they would never let me play with them. And I think that's what added to the mystique <laughs> that I never got to use them. And then I remember I was like five years old, and one of my aunts gave me this Play stand mixer. And oh, my gosh. I was all over that thing. <laughs> well, we had back in uh, on, uh, in the olden days of my time, uh -huh. we had something called a Holly Hobby oven. <gasps> and it was like this little oven with light bulbs in it, and it came with little um, mm -hmm. 
cake pans, and you make like a little cake mix, and you put it in there, and it would cook it on the light bulb. Is it like an easy bake? Sort of like an easy bake, you like an easy bake oven, yeah. I think I had an easy bake oven. <laughs> so you I had a little mixer, like a little kid's mixer? Yeah, and it and it would it was like a little stand mixer, and it worked. <laughs> I was like obsessed with that. And then when I was like six years old, one of my aunts gave me an electric hand mixer, and it was, you know, like the cheap. Ten dollar mixer that you see at Walmart, and that thing, I was, I love that thing. But that thing, like, it would smoke, and it was so, it was dangerous. And my parents had to hide it from me because <laughs> I was obsessed with it. But it eventually gave out. So I know you have an artisan. How old were you when you got your artisan? Because okay, well. In late 2017, that is when I knew that I wanted an artisan. That's when I started watching your channel, and the first video that I watched was when you unboxed that pink artisan. <laughs> and it was probably the summer of 2018 is when I got my artisan. I saved up all my money, and it was on eBay, and it was $200 for this brand new one that was unopened. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I was angry because my mother wouldn't let me get a red one. So I had to settle for contour silver. <laughs> so now you, you're officially in the HL6 club. Yes, I have graduated from <laughs> Artisan. And I love the HL6. I've only used it a few times, and I love it. Although I think I like the flat paddle better than the spiral. You know, I, I need to use the... I have a question for. Uh, <laughs> I haven't even used the flat paddle yet. Yeah. Mr. Here's Rudolph. Hey, Mr. Cash, question for okay. you. How did you negotiate that Hobart out of the box? Yeah, because wasn't that supposed to be for Christmas? Oh, the simple answer is <laughs> it got here when my parents weren't home. <laughs> <laughs> and the complicated answer is. My mother wanted, she said, oh, you can open it, and you can see if there's any nicks and scratches, but then you had to put it back. <laughs> yeah, but right. I never put it back. <laughs> <laughs> so you made your first loaves of bread in there, and so... Well, it was, I, when I said that in the video, I meant it was my first in the Hobart. Yeah, in the Hobart, in the Hobart bread in the artisan before, but it didn't do good. So what's your opinion between the artisan and the HL6 on that kneading action? Oh my gosh, the Hobart kills the artisan. <laughs> the artisan, sometimes I would be making bread and it would just stop. Yeah, it's almost like the dough gets stuck between the hook and the wall. The, I think that can get, because hap that happens on the commercial eight. It'll get stuck and then the the hook will like hesitate and it'll take a minute to get it you know to overcome that but i think it really happens in the i think i've literally jammed the artisan between the bowl dough and but the i hook. mean I've, <laughs> I've made plenty of bread in it and it hasn't like broken if i unplugged it and plugged it back in it would always turn on um i usually like once a month i just completely take it apart and clean it and one time i thought i broke it i was so <laughs> I was so sad, and then I realized that I hadn't got the motor brushes screwed in properly. Oh, so you're taking it really apart. Yeah. I like to, but it was the first time I've ever done it. I had it for like two years, and it was just, it had gotten like gunk under the band and stuff, and I had just taken it apart and put it all back together, and it wouldn't turn on, and I about lost it. <laughs> So Mark says he's got a 1909 Model oh 85. Wow. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Um, well, congratulations on your HL6. I hope you enjoy thank you. it. I, hope I actually you really made, enjoy. I made brownies in it yesterday. Ooh, yeah. Eric mm -hmm. loves brownies. He could eat a whole pan of brownies in one uh, sink. <laughs> it was the 100-hour brownies. Oh, gosh. <laughs> um, I actually have a question for you. Okay. Okay, so I know, I probably am not supposed to be saying this, but I know that on Facebook you put a little hint that you were going to do a giveaway. Oh, yes. Is, 
do the giveaway. Yes, so mm -hmm. I have some attachments for the KitchenAid made by a company that sells um, some attachments that are very similar to the KitchenAid, but they're a little less expensive. Like the, yeah, noticed, like the pasta attachments are like 200 bucks from KitchenAid, and theirs are just in the low 100 so we're going to be testing those out. They did send me two of each, so I'm going to give I'm going to give away um, one of each, and I'm going to be working on the first one this week. Um, you know, I work full time, so my ability to get to tons of uh, videos. I wish I could do it faster, but yes, they are sitting here and. Hopefully, I'm going to get to the first one this week, and we will do the giveaway, because I want to give them away before Christmas. No HL6 giveaway? An <laughs> <laughs> HL6? Wow, that would be amazing, huh, if I could do that. No, I think Eric would, yeah. Yeah, that's um, a little extreme yeah that's a little much for little old me right to mm -hmm. do that but i can Someday. tell you the next the next mixer on my list is an anchor room yeah i love my ink too mm -hmm. i love my ink so we're gonna go in and make some cookies eric right now yeah we're gonna um we have another camera set up and i have a Another HL6 set up, so we're going to make, I have all the ingredients out, so we can make uh, some cookies. Mm -hmm. So I've got to go in there. Um, well, I actually have one tiny little question okay. about bread making. Okay. Okay, so I've made bread in the HL6 twice, and when I always do it, I always do bread flour, and I end up kneading it for like 30 minutes. And it never gets, like, developed. It never gets the window pane. I don't know if that's flour I'm using. I'm using white lily bread flour. I know it's not as good as King Arthur, but I cannot find King Arthur. And I just don't understand. You know, white lily uses... Well, it's self-rising, isn't it? It's rising plenty because I use the staff, but... But it's self-rising on... Are top. you using white lily? Because one of the problems with white lily is I think no. white lily is spring wheat versus winter and one is like way softer and so the protein level on those other flowers are higher and that I'm, means and the protein is the gluten so and that's what gives you the strategy i'm using it says on the thing white lily bread flour and it has higher gluten and it's not self-rising there's still though i think white lily it's yeah it uses southern wheat so I'm gonna have to get hold of some yeah. King Arthur because I know the only place that sells King Arthur in like northern Alabama is Whole Foods, and that's like even if you can get some area, and we have to go all the way. It's just a big deal to go over there. I mean, you could even use some basic, you know, Pillsbury or whatever. Probably yeah, would even I've be bought better. some of that, yeah. but I started to use the white lily bread flour. What gives you that stretchy is the gluten, and gluten is protein. So mm -hmm. if you look at the protein level, you could probably look it up online. What's the protein yeah. level? And you'll probably see the difference being quite a bit because I believe they're using um, um, wheat grown in the south. So, Well, the white lily bread flour I think is 11%. And King Arthur bread flour is twelve point seven. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, that's what gets, I don't. Uh, to be honest with you, sometimes I don't necessarily look at the window pane. I just look at that stretchy. So I like grab it and do the stretch it, it Armstrong. It tears when I take it out of the mixer. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Thirty minutes just seems like a long time. Yeah, thirty minutes is a long time. But like usually, like, when place. I let it rest and rise and I put it down, it stretches just fine. It does the window pain. So, I don't know. Maybe the gluten has to rest for a while. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Try using some other brand and see yeah. if how that works. It ain't the mixer. Yeah. I don't no, think it's definitely not it's, the mixer. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 
Well, it's nice okay. talking to you. We're going to get going to making these cookies and using this. Okay. Well, okay. Uh, nice talking to you. Nice talking to you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Awesome. So, let me head into the kitchen. Eric, you want to? Uh, All right. So, I'm going to put on a, uh, I don't know, this is intermission. If you guys need to get a favorite beverage, you got about 30 seconds. So, we're still on. Oh, that's Talk Live. I don't want to put that one on here. I just do. Eric's so great at All right, there you go. So, um, Amy will be back in about 30 seconds or so. <laughs> okay. Okay, I just cut your audio, Amy. Of course, they can hear me, so. <laughs> we'll be back in about 20 seconds, folks. We're not running away. You got me? Okay, we <laughs> should be back with Amy now. Can you guys hear me and everything? Well, we they won't hear you for 30 seconds. <laughs> Sorry for the unglamorousness of this, but that's live, right? So can you guys hear me? They want to see how you put attachment. Okay, you should be back. Okay, everybody can hear okay? So let, me, let me see if I got the volume on here. You can hear me okay? Okay, so I hope you guys can hear me okay. We are making something out of the Betty Crocker cookbook. Mainly because I was working this a lot this week and I didn't have time to develop a recipe. So if you want to try this recipe, I can't like give out exact uh, amounts, but all you have to do is look at the Betty Crocker cookbook and this is the ginger snaps. I figured we would do ginger snaps because it is Christmas time, right? So I need to put my oven on 375, convection 375, get us baking here. And um, I have all my ingredients right here. So our first, we have to beat the sh brown sugar, shortening, molasses, and the egg. So we have our brown sugar. Yay! Our shortening. Interesting how these cookies have shortening. Like, they no butter. You guys can hear me okay? They say they can hear you. Um, unlike most videos, um, if we go to a tight end close up, then I gotta bang the camera around. Yeah, he's gotta move, he would have to move the so camera. So we might do that in a minute or so. <laughs> so I have some molasses here. This is grandma's. It's grandma's molasses. Ooh. Unfortunately, because I have the camera in there, my. My uh, system that I have right now will only allow me to go live with two cameras. So since I have a camera in there, I don't have an extra one for the bowl. But hey, right, I figure like we could play around with this. The question is, what's shortening? Uh, like Crisco. Well, maybe they need to know what's the difference between shortening and lard or shortening and butter. What does shortening do to that? Um, when I took a cooking class um, years ago, uh, one of the chef assistants called shortening the monkey fat <laughs> because it's basically, it used to be like hydronate, partially hydronated vegetable shortening. It's made from 
Now it's fully hydrogena hydrogenated. Um, I think it's kind of made from, it's not the greatest thing because I think partially it's made from palm oil, which is not like the greatest at all. Mm. Woo! We got a mixer. We got a mixer. My, uh, my um, brown sugar was a little chunky. I need to put the egg in too. I got my uh, thing over here. Got the egg in there. You guys can't see in the bowl. Hmm. Wow. I mean, this thing is rocking. Rocking, rocking. Unfortunately, you know, because HL6 is what it is, we don't have some things like you would on the KitchenAid. Like, we don't have scraper paddles and all that fun stuff. But hey, it's all good anyway, right? Do you want to go for handheld, Boo Boo? Huh? <laughs> oh, it's going to make, it'll be like give you um, seasickness. Eric's going to handheld it. Okay, so we got that stuff in. Does that kill things? Put it back up there. What? <laughs> hey, Eric! Turn this camera back on. Okay. Yeah, we had technical difficulties. Technical there. difficulties there, Eric. <laughs> okay. So what do I need to do to bring that one back? Um, I don't know. I guess we're temporarily back here. That's okay. Are let we me back? Move, let me move it. That was the paparazzi. <laughs> I unplugged it accidentally. You're seeing the forbidden rest of the house. <laughs> here. I hope not, right? <laughs> You need the technical difficulties. Yeah, I need the little peacock thing that goes and goes, right? <laughs> hey, I'm back. <laughs> I was making cookies. Now I'm not making cookies. The sound is out. Huh? I have no sound, Eric. What do you have no sound? <laughs> Can you uh, hear us? Oh, they won't. Oh, no, no, no. no. Okay. Technical difficulties. Okay. Okay, okay, sound, sound is back, back sort of, uh, through, through this, this other mic. mic. I need to kill the other camera and bring it back because it's dead, dead. right, Boo Boo? I guess so. So how do I do that? Um, you have to reload it as an input. So, I need to kill it off, right? Yeah. <laughs> you can hear me? Well, well they can, can hear you sort of. of. <laughs> they can hear Eric. Well, well yeah. yeah. Eric's trying to get that camera back working again. Ah! Don't you love live? <laughs> ah! There's an echo. I used to remember the molasses as being sweet. Is there sweet molasses? You know, the molasses kind of has a weird smell to it. There's an echo. That's because I hit the other camera mic by accident, the one that's in front of you. Yeah, Eric uh, accidentally unplugged the camera in there. Like <laughs> 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 <Played bad. laughs> Sorry about that, guys. Are we back in business, Eric? I hear you both this echo, but I don't care. Sound is gone. <laughs> No. 
Now I'm hearing Amy through Eric Mike only, yeah. Oh, well, we're going to blame Eric for this one. Well, it is me. Okay. <laughs> if. How. Okay, let me see if I can fix it. I don't know how you go, like... Go, go, go! go. <laughs> okay, Amy's back in control here. So, all is well, right? So she's over there doing what I try to do. Um, when I pull the cord out by accident, it just freezes the camera, right? You lost audio, and you got... That camera's not doing. plugged in right. It's not plugged in right. The one in there is not plugged in right. You're not seeing it? No. It was on my list. It, it's on the list, but it's still, you can't see it. It's not working, boo. Okay, well, since we have technical difficulties, we might be um, ending it here. <laughs> no. There's Sorry be about that. You're going to have to go fix that camera. Oh, there's got to be something simple here. Just one second. <laughs> Technical difficulties. <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. Oh, well, yeah, I just put up the HL6. What do you guys think about this? <laughs> what time is it in Australia? You can hear me. Yeah, I'm back at the control panel. So if you guys are hearing the, you're seeing the HL6 spin around there for a second. Um... Eric's trying to get that camera back working again. So if you guys have any questions, we can watch this HL6 spin around and uh, while he's fixing that. You guys can hear me okay? We should hear you okay. <laughs> we'll play Eric for this. You. you just can't see me. <laughs> it's already, it's 2.23 2 in the afternoon in California. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It would be. <laughs> no, we're still here. Can you hear us, Cash? Can you hear me? Eric's trying to fix the uh, camera. Sound is good. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, the uh, the HL6 has given us a little, um, a little view here while Eric fixed the camera. The swimsuit competition. So if you guys don't remember, a while ago I did a video. I called it my Palooza. I called it my Palooza. And I put all of my mixers on a spinner like this. I put it on a spinner. Okay, let me, let me see if you... I had the wrong button. Let me see if Eric managed to fix this. Let's see what he can he get it done. Can he get it done, Eric? Oh wait a minute. Nope, you didn't get it done. <laughs> We're close. We're close. <laughs> yeah, that is one sexy looking mixer. So you know who puts their uh, all their mixers up on a spinner and plays around and videotapes them. Only me, right? Okay, we got some life going here okay, now. We have life back. Um, we have some life going on. Flip. Eric just needs to adjust it. What do you What do you need to adjust? Because I, it's just on the floor. Well, what I'm saying is, once you get by me, I can get. We can get into the mixer. Uh, yeah. No, that ain't working, Eric. Huh? <laughs> Sorry about that. A tour of the house. Uh, someday I'll do a tour of the house. Hobart didn't want to put this into production. Yeah. Um, that's pretty crazy, huh? The HLC is showing itself off. Eric's still trying to adjust the camera. The international competition. Yeah, so I put all my mixers on a spinner. I'll put a link in the description to that. Um, it was pretty funny. I literally, I had two separate videos. I did a stand mixers under $200 and then stand mixers over $200. And um, 
yeah, it was pretty fun. I basically just sat and watched these mixers twirl around like this. Um, Eric is still having difficulties getting it together. <laughs> Do you have a commercial eight scraper paddle you can test? Cash says it fits. Huh? I don't have a scraper okay, paddle. Hey, Google, that work for you. I don't have a scraper paddle. Eric's okay. Eric's back and running again. So. Let's see what we got going here. Can people hear you through your own mic? You can turn off, mute this guy out. So are you guys able to hear me? Well, they'll really find out in a second when you go into the room. <laughs> So I hope you guys are able okay. to hear me. Okay, y'all. It's Eric. So Amy's in the kitchen now. <laughs> Hopefully you can hear her on her I'm clicking wrong buttons here. Sorry, my fault. <laughs> I think we're good now. Okay, so everybody can hear me. I don't know how well you can see in this. You can't see in it as well as the normal videos. Um, so I got my spices in here. Everybody can hear me okay, Eric? So I got I my... I lost audio, but I think it's good again now. Okay, so I got cinnamon, ginger cloves. I got some salt going in this flour and I also have some baking soda going in this flour. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a little rock and roll. Let me scrape a little bit in here. You guys can't probably can't see really well in this bowl because my cameraman, well, I won't comment, Eric. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work. Adjustment part two. Okay, folks, now this is live TV. <laughs> Close enough. <laughs> so we got our flour going in here. So can you guys hear that little, like, high-pitched uh, sound? That just tells you that the HL6 is working, huh? That just tells you we're baking. I love that spiral beater. Look at that. I love that spiral beater. I need to get to the bottom of um, which beater I'm supposed to use when. Am I supposed to use the the spiral one when you're starting out bread. Two and a quarter. Okay. Look at that. Look at that spiral beater. That baby is nice. Ooh, it's it smells really good. Really, really good. Betty, you hooked us up today. <laughs> okay, so let me get Someday Eric will buy me a mixer Not a mixer, but a mixer He'll buy me a camera mixer 
So I can have like 10 cameras going at once. <laughs> Make sure, let me see if, how can I, what are you doing now? Okay, so, we have our dough here. Oh, they, they can't see anything. Yeah, you guys can't see anything yet. But just wait, it'll be fantastic. Okay, I mean, is that what, right there, or you want to back out a little bit? Back it out a little bit. Okay, Eric, it's blown out. Well, yeah, because we were in a bowl here, so let me... <laughs> Sorry about that again, guys. Unbrighten it. And so. Okay. Just a little more realistic. So I'm using a cookie scoop, and I have some sugar here, and I'm just going to roll our cookie in some sugar and place it on our cookie sheet. And this is a USA pan baking pan that I actually got um, when we went to the factory. A year ago. Yeah, a year ago. A year ago this month, huh? No, uh, November. Yeah. Um, we had a good old time. Should I roll these in my hand first like this? Oh, it's your show. Do whatever you want. It's my cookie. It's your cookie, you can do whatever you want, right? I just kind of want it smoother than that. So we got two cookies here, three cookies. So we're just going to roll them, sugar them. Mmm. They smell really good. That ginger is amazing. Amazing, amazing ginger. Just going to, I think Betty hooked us up with some really nice cookies here. <laughs> I'm going to roll. Sugar. Mm. Some smell good. Yeah. Smells amazing. That molasses really smells Molassesy. Okay. So I'm going to put these in the oven really quick. I don't know how long these are supposed to bake. 12 minutes, but I kind of have a big cookie here. So these are going in the oven. Okay. So I want to be back in there. <laughs> so let's <laughs> Hey everyone. All right, you are live in here now. <laughs> uh, do we need a timer set for your cookies, Boo Boo? Yeah, um like what do you want ten minutes or less? Eleven maybe. Eleven? Okay. Okay, so 11 minutes, we're going to have some cookies, guys. Molasses gives it a good chewy texture. <laughs> now, I have cookie all over me, and we're going to blame that on Eric, too. You want that camera back to its original position, then? Yeah. Without me killing it, of course? To this day, I've never heard Eric or Amy refer to... Another as Amy or Eric is always Boo or Evil. Ah, oh, yeah. Um, well, there's a story on that. Well, when you start getting the habit of calling somebody something like that. She calls me all kinds of names. Some good, some bad. Yeah, but, I but, call them everything. But when I go, hey, Aim, it reminds her of her mother calling her Aim. That yeah. means I'm not happy, right? So Amy knows she's in trouble. And I go, hey, Aim. No, when he calls me my, my actual name, I think, uh-oh, I'm in trouble. I'm under stress. I'm in trouble. <laughs> I, something bad is happening. I've, I've done something wrong. Look at this. I got two of these head boppers for Christmas. I've done something wrong. I'm in trouble, right? Something like that. I know that that's happening when he calls me by my real name. 
How did Amy teleport from the kitchen? That's the magic of YouTube. <laughs> um, you brought your pan trays from TJ Maxx. Catherine, did you get um, USA Pan from TJ Maxx? That's awesome. Ginger and molasses. I got it all over me. <laughs> so I do have some um, attachments to see if they work on that HL6. As soon as Eric adjusts that camera back, we can go in there and um, see if we can get them to work. Oops, sorry about that. I need to plug in my iPad here. We can see we can see if that it will work with the uh, Hobart. So that was the first HLC that I've ever got. This was so when I got it, it was used. Um, some lady who her neighbor worked for a Hobart dealer, she bought it from him. So I got it. Um, I got it, uh, for like 200 bucks and then this thing came along and I put this sticker on here. So you see the big sticker. I first ordered a big sticker thinking it was the same as the other sticker. And when it came, it was huge. And I also, so then I ordered one, someone sent me a, uh, DM telling me which was the right sticker to buy. So, why is the door covered with Amazon boxes? <laughs> so this is the other side Hobart. I could put this here like someone in the group did. I might have to cut it down a little bit to get it to stay there, but I think that's a great idea. I might do that. Someone in the group put a small one here as well. If I cut this, I could probably do that. Um, why was the door covered with... Oh, KitchenAid attachments do work on the HL6. You used a meat grinder with it. Awesome. So, um, Eric's growing antlers. Yeah, he is growing antlers. How's that camera in there going, Eric? It ain't pretty. Aaron, hello from the Bay Area. Awesome, awesome. I'm a Northern California girl, right? I love the huge sticker. What do you guys think? The big sticker or the little one? This is the one I have on the other one. The little sticker is more accurate. The little sticker looks more like like you would probably see if they were to sell these, but um, I kind of like the big one just because, you know, if you're going to say, I got a Hobart, this says you got a Hobart, right? What side? This is the one that I have in the, the one in the other room. Oops, my microphone. Uh, this is the one I have on in the other room. So when I, I did a video and I was putting that big sticker on and someone sent me a message saying this was the right one. So this is the small one, and I think I'm going to put it here, but I just, I got to trim it a little bit so it'll fit better. So I'll do that. Um, be it go big or go <laughs> Hey, if you're going to have a Hobart, right, you might as well have a 10-foot sign on it. Mine, uh, it has a little bit of bubbles in here. I need to get one of those things, like, like you would put, um... A car tent or something on. Any old Hobart can wear that small one. Yeah. Any old Hobart can wear this one, but only the HL6 gets the big one, right? So how many people that are on right now have an HL6? I know that Cash has an HL6. I know that um Brett has one or two. Brett has one or two, exactly. I know that, um, I don't know who else has one that's on right now.
I have an idea for the next live, a food processor live. I actually bought a new food processor on Black Friday. Eric doesn't know about it yet. But, um, so maybe we can test that one, doing a live. Um, Calla Lily, you don't have one yet. Oh, right? Get, if you're going to get one, you better get it because it's going to be gone. It's going to be gone. DT has one. So DT, how do, what do you think of your HL6 so far? That thing is huge, but home. I mean, it is a large mixer for home. It's it's pretty heavy if you want to move it around and you you know you don't you can't carry a lot of weight. That is an issue. Um, I usually have Eric move it for me. It's not horribly heavy. It's probably a little heavier than the commercial eight. Um, is Brooke in my Facebook group? I don't think she is. Um, DT loves it to death. Loves it to death. Awesome. Awesome. So, um, actually, we could do that right here, Eric. What? Can you bring in that tray that I have with that slicer attachment on it? Yeah, but your cookie is going to be done in about three and a half minutes. Oh, wait, I can't do that because the plug is different. Never um, mind. Let me, get the, let me get a cookie rack for you. Okay. <laughs> My cookies are going to be done here in a minute. Um, I thought that I could uh, plug this one in and we could run an attachment, but I actually don't have a plug for it. Um, I'm hemming and hawing because I'm just that way. I have a small space. Yeah. I mean, that is a big consideration if you have a small space. If you do have like a cupboard you can put it in or a closet you can put it in when you're not using it, you don't want anything that's going to take up all your counter space. I understand that 100%. Um... Book is in your Facebook group. I don't know. I don't think she is, but she could be. I don't. Th I don't think she is. Um, I can check that, but I don't. I don't think she is. Um, you all screaming in our faces, cussing, and the fact that you're. <laughs> I mean, this is crazy. I'm sure you guys understand live stream is a whole lot different. When you get ready, um, you're going to use some grandma looking ones. Ooh. Not these little silicone crazy ones. No. Ooh, these are my LA Sweet Home. I did a review of this like years ago. Yeah. These are great. Yeah. Ooh, they're so soft. Yeah. <laughs> so, how are those cookies looking? I don't know, but the time It fits under there. your cabinets on your counter. Awesome. Oh, I can say they've grown. <laughs> they're about they're about this tall now. Uh oh. They, 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 be. they have a bit a more sizable hump than that tree does. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my Christmas tree is weird. Because it's not even shaped like a Christmas tree. It it's, almost looks like a bush. It looks like a bush. It's almost round. <laughs> I love having my HL6 on the counter. It's a conversation starter. If you have cooks coming over to your house and they see this HL6, if they're familiar okay. with... All right. You um, got one minute. You want to start to walk over there now? Do they look done? I don't know if they look done, but they, they rose. Eric's like the king of the cookies. Every time I cook make cookies, he looks at me like, um, you know, did you take them out? Did you take them out? Um... Yeah, so if you if you have friends that are like cooks and they know mixers, if you have this out on their your right. counter, they're going to be like, Hey, y'all. So this is how we cook <laughs> cookies here in our house here. One is you wait for the ding. If it's reasonably cl close, like we think we know what we're doing, we'll leave them on the cookie sheet for a minute or two to kind of finish cooking a little bit. And then we'll take the fish spatula and then transfer it over to the, uh, the wire rack so it can properly cool there. Um, sometimes it doesn't work out well, but for the most part it works out pretty good. If we try to use a fish, fish spatula too quickly, the cookies are they're too soft. Yeah. So we, you want to take them out for me and let them sit for a minute or two on the pan? Oh, you don't want to do it yourself? No. 
Okay. Eric is my shoe chef. Yeah, he's my shoe chef all the time. He cleans up everything when we're filming. He cleans up between shots. He's just magnificent, right? I thought about the same. Do you think you won't move while using the HL6? Um, will it move around? I don't really have a, any trouble with it moving hey, around. Hey, y'all. Ooh, look at, oh, man, those look good. Don't burn my laptop over there. Oh, okay. A little sliding action there. Oh. Okay, I'll come in there so, so we can so get those Okay, y'all can see. We got cookies here. <laughs> we just need a couple minutes. We made cookies. We made cookies. Maybe you good. try, yeah, a liquidation. Um... Yeah, I don't know what I'm going to do with, when all these uh, HL6s are gone. I mean, I have two. Should I get... <laughs> uh, no, I won't. Um, okay, you ready for me, Eric? Well, they're sitting there. They need a couple of minutes to kind of cool off a little bit, and then we'll put them on the I've seen rack. several that fit the bill, but haven't pulled the trigger. I'm adding a shelf because of the shelves. Yeah, um, it's hard because I have a lot of my mixers. A lot of my mixers are in the pan room. I have these carts that I have them on. I have some down in the basement. Some I just don't use, really. So um, some are slated to be donated. Some are waiting to be donated because I don't want to do anything with COVID going on. Because um, I do want to pare my collection down. So I am going to get rid of... Um, At least get under 40. <laughs> I'm going to get rid of a few. But if they have one, I'm getting a third one. <laughs> Merv, Mervio? I don't want to say that wrong. Oh, 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 okay. Dobermans, Dobermans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Beautiful, beautiful dogs you have. I saw your picture. Um, okay, do you want to put them on the wire rack or do you want me to do them for you? I'll put them on there. Well, they're ready so for you. Are you ready for me? Yeah. Okay, we so we have cookies, Here guys. Goes. So let's see. Maybe I can do a time warp. I don't know. We'll and do one in the other room. room here. So, I don't know. Can we warp on in the other room? I don't know. All right. What's that movie? Oh. All right, we lost the audio for a second. I forgot I'm not going to take that right yet. All right. Time warping right now. Okay, let me time warp because I need to wash my hands. She's so time warping, wash her hands, all that good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, okay. Let me know when you're ready, Bobo. I need to get a spatula. You got your spatula right there, baby. Oh, okay. You're good. Sorry about that, guys. Here, right. I did my time warp. These look pretty amazing, Boo. Boo Diddly. Boo Diddly, we got props here. They look pretty amazing, Boo Diddly. You did a fantastic cooking job. Bacon job. Mmm. We have homemade ginger snap cookies straight from the Betty Crocker cookbook. So if you guys want to take a look at this recipe, I can't post it because it's not my recipe, but if you have the Betty Crocker cookbook, you could probably even get them on their website. Um, should I put in another batch? You guys want to see me put in another batch or I'll do another batch later. I can do another batch later. Okay, so should I taste one? A hot cookie? Mm. Wow, these are delicious. They need to set up a little bit. Yeah, you probably need to let them sit for a little bit. Because they're slightly doing. Five minutes, probably. 
But if you take your cookies out when they're not doughy, but just as they're setting up, when they do cool the rest of the way, they'll be delicious. They and they won't be hard like... Mm. These are really good. Let's just say that my dad one time <laughs> nailed my my sister's cookies to the wall on a plaque. Oh, that's they were nice. They're that hard. That's nice, Eric. So as long as we don't do that, we're good. <laughs> okay. So let's see here. We're gonna try the slicer. So we have our HL6. And we're gonna plug our HL6 in. Somebody has a cooking humor. They said nice rack. <laughs> this is a pampered chef rack. One time I did a video of these and I literally put my artisan on one of those and it took, you know, it survived him. So they're really good. They're from Pampered Chef. I'll put a link down there. Um, Will. I'm sorry about that. So, Boo, can you give me a? What you need? Can you give me the bowl off of that other HL6? Intermission, right? I don't know if we have to do intermission. You can do a song and dance in there, right? I could do a song and dance. Okay. Let me move that there. Then I can move this here. Uh, Cookie. We're doing a song and dance intermission. We got a new bowl. <laughs> hey. I got a new bowl, right? Okay, so we got our HLC bowl here. I have some zucchini. Just gonna cut the ends off so we can see how this thing grinds them up. Or uh, shreds them. Let me make some zucchini bread out of this. So we will see. So this is the Slicer Shredder. We will be doing a video this week on an alternative to this KitchenAid Slicer Shredder. It is less expensive. So we will watch this here now, and then when we watch this in a couple days, uh, we will see how it performs um, against the KitchenAid. But I'm telling you, the price is a lot cheaper. Is it gonna fit? It's on there. Woohoo! Okay, so what grading level are we gonna do here? What grading level are we gonna do? We got our bowl. What grading? And I'm fine. They give you a slicer. And they give you the shredder. Well, it works on here. I would suggest you grate how you're going to use it. Are you going to make some bread using yeah, that Yeah, I'm going to make some zucchini bread. Then so. grate it at that level. I'll grate it like that. This is cool. It's on there. It's working. It's working. <laughs> Let me move it this way so you guys can see. It's working. Can you see that? It works on the HL6. It works on the HL6. That's a crazy You want to try something else, Boo? What? You got, you got cheese in the fridge, I believe, right? It works on the HL6. It works on the HL6. Let's see. Let me take this off real quick. How do I get it off? Oh, I got that off there. Whoa! Okay, I hope that's clean. <laughs> um, don't tell Eric you saw that. He's going to be eating this. Okay, um, this is don't worry, boo, I saw that. a pasta roller. I actually keep my pasta rollers nice and clean in a towel in this thing i wash these in the dishwasher these are clear shoe boxes that come from the container store so when i have my clean uh 
parts to the KitchenAids or whatever mixers, I put them in these shoe boxes because I can wash the shoe box. And so I know the shoe box is nice and clean. Um, really quick. Let's rinse that out of there. Because I did have, I don't know what that thing, where that thing has been. So, hey, I'm a germaphobe. So, one of these is the roller, and one is the cutter. So let's just put this baby on here. Hmm. See if it fits. Uh... Bum, 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 bum. <laughs> Am I the only one that gets excited over this? Oh my gosh, I'm loving my HL6 even more because the pasta attachment fits. Yeah, it's rolling in there. Sweet. Oh my gosh. Whee! Huh? Oh, I, don't, I don't want to get into a war here. <laughs> About what? The Deep South and Texas doesn't count. In what? Mixer land? I mean, cash and geometry argument. Uh oh. Can you guys hear me okay? I'm starting to worry about Eric's uh, mixing abilities over there. Okay, back on with the slicer shredder. So we have confirmed the slicer shredder and the pasta attachment both work on the HL6. <laughs> I love it. Okay, whoops. <laughs> Put that in there. Okay. Whoops. Yeah, but it doesn't work. Just smack it. Yeah! Okay. So we have... Grind it, grind it, grind it, grind it. Okay, we got... Put that baby in there. Put, why isn't this fitting in there? Why isn't this thing fitting in there now? Did it work a minute ago? Yeah. What? Oh, okay. Did I scratch it? Uh, Probably. There's a line on here. It's got a line up to. Okay. Let's rock and roll. Woohoo! <laughs> um, it's sort of going all over the place. Uh, Bill, can you get me a taller bowl or something? I don't know. Hold on. Okay. Booba, what do you want? It sort of flings it all over the place. this app. Oh, well, there you go. See how there you go. go. All right. <laughs> Duct tape, bailing wire, and an extra bowl. bowl. <laughs> Woo! I don't need it. 
up that high. So it does work. Whoa! That's user error. <laughs> has got to line up. If you don't line this thing up with the groove in there, you're in trouble. Okay. How do I get this out now? <laughs> I've used this thing before and it wasn't as much trouble. Got kind of a little piece of stuck here. Okay. I've used this before and it wasn't quite as much trouble. It moves a little trouble today. No, I don't think so. Okay, so we're making some zucchini bread. I can officially say that I made a mess, but the slicer shredder and the pasta attachment does in fact work on the HL6. So we're going to, um, we're going to try out a different one, a different brand this week, see how it compares. That was a little on the clunky side, Amy can't um, hear me, but I'm going to come in and steal a cookie. What was that? Shh. Uh, that's the beauty of turning the mic on and off. You can't hear me. You don't know what I'm saying. I'm dreaming of a ginger snap cookie. <laughs> mm. Wow, these are good. Thank you, Belly. Mm -hmm. Mm, mm, mm. Are you going to make a mess with some of my uh, cheese? No, I'll do that later. Ah. Okay. You want to time warp me? Oh, we're going back in there now? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, be careful here. You're mic. All right. Mm. I can confirm that those cookies are good. So if you had a Betty Crocker cookbook, the ginger snaps, mm. they're not flat like ginger snaps. I'm used to ginger snaps kind of be flat. Sorry okay, for the record, that was me, not Amy. Huh? No. Am I ready to time warp? All right, um. All right we got time warp, baby. Okay. I'm time warped. You got no audio. Give a second here. Okay, I think she's back on now. Oop, I think she's back on now. Yeah, so that was like four zucchinis. I'm going to be making a lot of zucchini bread. Actually, I might make some. I might put some in an omelet. I'm thinking I'm going to put some in an omelet. I could actually make a, um, a quiche out of it. But, um, yeah. That was awesome. I'm so glad that uh, uh, those things work on it. I don't have... The only other attachment I have is the... I have the, the spiralizer. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I have the spiralizer. To be honest with you, I don't really ever use it. So, I'm glad to know that they do fit on there. So, what do you guys think about that? That was pretty awesome, huh? So, poor Amy needs a pasta pot. 
<laughs> well, yeah, we had the whole mess going on. You needed a taller bowl. Yeah, I needed a ta taller bowl. That was user error. Or a pot stand. Yeah, the shoe boxes are really cool. I get them at container store. I actually put them in the dishwasher. I put them bottom rack dishwasher and they survived. Um, and what's great about them is because I like to wash the containers because over time, you know, you get the container can get dirty and then you put the clean uh, paddles in there and then, yeah. So I like things that I can run through the dishwasher like my, um, what is that when you have when you put your tools in, like a tool crock, I put those in there. I only buy stuff that I can dishwash like that. So, they're great. It's pretty cool with all the, the stuff that I have with these all these mixers. I don't know where I'm going to, how, how I'm going to do with these HLC ones. Because, I mean the HL6. Because um, these won't fit in those little... Uh, shoebox ones, but they do make like a deep shoebox that's like like triple uh, height compared to the regular shoeboxes. So if your cookies get hard, you can grate them up to make crumbs for pie. Yeah, those were so good, and I can still. It's like my mouth is still salivating from the spice. It was really good. Yeah, it's really fresh. So um, Betty gets thumbs up on that. Betty gets thumbs up on that. So, guys, I am, uh, I'm going to let you guys go. We've been on here for, like, what, two hours? <laughs> First and foremost, Frederick, 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 you are awesome. I really appreciate your phone call because we learned a lot about the HL6, confirmed a lot of things that we thought about the HL6, and um, I really, really appreciate your call. Also, Cash, I always appreciate your call. I like talking with you. So you can hit me up on the uh, DM, Cash. We could talk about this further. Um, the HL6 doesn't bog down with the meat grinder. Yeah. Yeah, they got some under, under the cap. Someone has some under the cabinet hooks for KitchenAid attachments. And rumor has it that they can make one. Someone said earlier in the chat... They can make ones that'll fit the HL6 attachments. So that's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. So guys, have a great evening. Um, it's Saturday night, 6 o'clock. I hope you guys um, have a great evening. Sorry about all the shenanigans, about our technical difficulties and the um, <coughs> Eric difficulties. Me? <laughs> but, you know, that's how it is when it's live, right? Yeah, Frederick is the man. He is the man. So, um, awesome. It was great talking to you guys. We might go live again. If I could do this again next weekend, um, I'll let you guys know. I will post it in, I'll post it on the channel and in the Facebook group um, if I'm able to go live. Someone wants to do a Bosch live, so maybe we could do that, or maybe we could do some Christmas stuff. I don't know. We'll figure it out by then. Have a great evening, you guys. I really appreciate you joining me. And um, I think we need to go eat some cookies. Right, Eric? So, what are you saying, Bobo? I'm saying, see ya. Are we trying to pull the plug? Pull the plug. So, you guys, have a great evening. <laughs>